Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, <clears throat> I welcome all of you in my today's video uh, that is regarding the approach to an unconscious patient. When you are working, you are working in emergency department, and a patient is brought to you uh, with unconsciousness. How will you proceed? Well, the first thing I would like to mention over here is what is the basic difference between the unconsciousness and delirium. Well. Delirium is defined as acute confusional state with hyperactivity or hypoactivity and inability to maintain attention. The person is hemodynamically stable in case of delirium. BP, pulse, temperature, respiratory rate, all the things may be normal in delirium. Hemodynamically stable but the patient is confused. Contrary to, that, contrary to that, in unconsciousness, the patient is not hemodynamically stable. The patient may or may not be confused. But when you check the BP pulse, you will find something that will help you in the diagnosis. Uh, regarding delirium, I will make another video on that. So, we will limit our discussion to the approach to the unconsciousness patient today. Well, the first thing you should do according to the emergency protocol is you look for ABC, the airway, breathing and circulation. At the same time, you also look for the GCS scoring, the Glasgow Coma Scale scoring. If that is equal to 7 or less than 7, intubate the patient. Intubate the patient, that is indication for intubation irrespective of the cause and start the ambo begging. Well, it also protects the airway from aspiration because if the person is aspirating, you have blocked the trachea and there will be no fluids or gastric contents coming into the pulmonary system, into the lungs. So now today, I'm going to talk about how can you uh, pick the diagnosis just from the vitals so you look for the pulse if the pulse is taky or brady what would you think of if the person is having severe bradycardia the pulse is 40 and is unconsciousness what comes to your mind heart block third degree heart block so you quickly do an ecg confirm it uh, give atropine you confirm the heart block if that is a heart block you give a tropine and go for the pacemaker drug overdose severe beta blocker or calcium channel blocker overdose can cause severe bradycardia the tachycardia if the patient is having tachycardia what will come you to your mind number one shock if the patient is in shock that is uh, the BP is very low so the compensatory response is tachycardia. So you should look for the shock if there is tachy. But you should also look for ventricular fibrillation. You should also look for SVT. You should also look for ventricular tachycardia. And confirm with the ECG or apply the defibrillator if the rhythm is shockable, shock. So just from the Brady and Techie, you can think of these diagnoses and help the patient accordingly. Volume of the pulse, what, can, what it can tell you. If there is low volume with Techie, think of the shock, hypotension. If there is high volume with Techie, think about aortic regurgitation, think about thyrotoxicosis. Think about isolated systolic hypertension. Well, these are the causes for high volume pulse. Think about volume or load. Coming toward the rhythm, if the rhythm is irregular, think about the atrial fibrillation with the stroke. Pa patient present with the uh, unconsciousness. Think about ventricular fibrillation, not maintaining the BP. And if you shock the patient, the patient can revert in a, in a few seconds. And if there is no pulse, 
what will you do start the CPR and attach the defibrillator if the rhythm is shockable shock the patient if there is a rhythm is not shockable find out the the cause for that we will uh, discuss that in another video the unshockable the unshockable rhythm that is either the asystole or the pulseless electrical activity the 4h and the 40s we will discuss in another video but right now you have to diagnose what is going on with the patient from these parameters coming toward the bp if the bp is high and the patient is unconsciousness what would you think of hypertension encephalopathy on the top second ischemic stroke hemorrhagic stroke or brain hemorrhage these three are the main things a patient is having low BP with high pulse what is this usually shock hypotension a patient is having high BP and low pulse with irregular breathing what is this raised intracranial pressure raised intracranial pressure this is called the Cushing principle the Cushing triad so you have to look for the cause of the raised intracranial pressure and you have to keep that thing in mind if there is low BP what would you suspect shock hypotension MI you have to exclude all these causes on shock I will make another video video but right now low BP you low BP in an unconscious patient you should take it as a shock either cardiogenic shock hypovolumic shock hemorrhagic shock whatever is the cause this is shock look for this third thing is look for the saturation if that is low hypoxia hypoxemia can cause unconsciousness you give oxygen and the patient improves and then look for the cause for the low spo2 what was the cause for low spo2 either there is infection or there is a pneumothorax there is a hemothorax whatever is the cause massive pulmonary edema cardiogenic shock leading to the pulmonary edema you have to exclude that ccf patient is not maintaining oxygen situation what is your diagnosis pulmonary edema due to severe ccf so you give lasix in that case sugar look for the hypoglycemia and the hyperglycemia if the patient is having hypoglycemia just replace the sugar and find out the cause what is the most common cause of hypoglycemia that is drugs the insulin or oral hypoglycemic medication then you take the history diagnose what was the cause treat the cause and manage accordingly deranged RFTs and deranged LFTs also cause hypoglycemia because the insulin is metabolized in kidneys and liver if those are deranged that will lead to the increased bioavailability of insulin that will cause hypoglycemia so you have to decrease the dose in deranged LFTs and deranged RFTs now temperature can also tell you a lot of things if the temperature is high what would you think of infection leading to sepsis on the top second thyroid storm another cause third drug overdose some of the drugs can cause increase in temperature especially the anticholinergic drug overdose because sweating is mediated by acetylcholine if acetylcholine is inhabited there is no sweating if there is no sweating the temperature of the body increases so you have to include the sepsis and find out the cause from where the infection was coming either it was the UTI either it is meningitis either it is brain epsis or it is deeply seated some focus in the abdomen or there is scanapsis carbuncle whatever is the cause find out that cause now from these things you can quickly quickly diagnose a patient that comes to you that what is going on with the patient either it is delirium or unconsciousness if the respiratory rate is high 
so we should calculate the sofa scoring that is a new scoring for the sepsis i will make another video on sofa scoring so right now if the respiratory rate is high that is equal to or more than 22 with the bp systolic bp less than 100 and the gcs less than 15 then the sofa scoring is positive and this is sepsis so the second cause for the increased respiratory rate is the hypoxia hypoxemia decrease in oxygen saturation due to any cause metabolic acidosis in metabolic acidosis the chest, the chest examination is usually normal and there is compensatory increase in the respiratory rate well the respiratory rate if it is low think about the drug overdose think about the drug overdose well there are a lot of causes but these are the most common causes for the increased respiratory rate and decreased respiratory rate. and now coming toward the cause of the unconsciousness what is causing the unconsciousness well the this is can be cleared from the history and examination and you can go according to that line but here i will discuss all the causes you can suspect an unconscious patient so from coming from the head meningitis encephalitis stroke and brain abscess you have to look for that in a patient with an unconsciousness with the uh, no known history with no clear history so you should suspect these things and we have seen a lot of patient a patient is all right and for the last five days the patient is confused the patient is drowsy and the patient is sleepy all the time and when you investigate the patient that came out to be that due to the come out to be encephalitis or there may be stroke or there may be brain abscess so from from the brain you have you should think of these things from the lungs coming down you should think of pneumonia pneumothorax and hemothorax which can be evident from the examination when you put the strength and also from the chest x-ray and also you should think of the COPD you should also think of COPD and you should also think of hypoxemia well in COPD the CO2 retention can cause unconsciousness the flapping tremor you can also pick from that CO2 narcosis from the heart coming toward the heart the ACS acute coronary syndrome MI HT elevated MI non HT elevated MI or unstable angina you should consider that rhythm problems in the heart from the ECG and the pulse cardiac tamponade from the echo in the abdomen we should look for the abdomen for the liver spleen kidneys and bladder for the acute abdomen acute abdomen can cause the sepsis and also we can get hepatosplenomegaly and think of some infection that can lead to the unconsciousness or if there is ascites mesioascites and jaundice we should think of hepatic encaph or if the bladder is tender we should think of sepsis with the focus being lying in the bladder or if the renal punch is positive by looking at the patient face if that is tender think about the abscess lying in the kidneys think about the infection lying in the kidneys from the skin we should pick skin skin rash any skin lesion so if a patient is having fever and there is a rash think about viral infection think about meningitis Now what investigation would you do the ct brain blood cp ct brain will will give you an idea of about the the stroke the brain abscess the meningitis and encephalitis you can go for the for the ccf studies that is the lp or mri the blood cp can tell you a lot of things well i have made uh, a video on blood cp you can find that on my channel and I have explained how can you diagnose a variety of diseases from just blood CP the ABGs can tell you a lot of things metabolic acidosis is a cause of unconsciousness and find out the cause for the metabolic acidosis such as the septic shock such as the sepsis such as the DKA chemistry can tell you a lot of things in ABGs you should look for the CO2 CO2 narcosis you should look for oxygen hypoxemia chemistry can tell you a lot of things such as the LFTs, hepatic 
encephalopathy RFTs, renal encephalopathy, uremic encephalopathy, serum electrolyte, the hyponatremia can give you confusion. Urinary can tell you about the focus of infection, urosepsis. Ultrasound abdomen can tell you about the hepatosplenomegaly, acute abdomen, gut perforation, a lot of things. Chest x-ray can tell you about focus of infection, pneumonia, pneumothorax, hemothorax. ECG can tell you about the rhythm abnormalities as being a cause of unconsciousness, severe heart block can cause unconsciousness due to decreased perfusion to the brain. Echo can tell you about cardiac tamponade and the cardiac function, whether the ejection fraction, that those things are normal or not. So this is uh, about how would you approach an unconscious patient in the ER. What would you suspect? Which investigation would you do?